Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Glad, Chief Medical Officer of Fullscript, the leading healthcare platform for providers to prescribe healthcare's best supplements, drive better patient outcomes, and scale practice growth with unparalleled efficiency. As a healthcare provider, I know that finding time to stay up to date on the latest trends and research in modern medicine can be a daunting task. That's why I'm excited to share a cutting edge supplement course our team of medical experts worked on in collaboration with A4M and several industry experts designed to help you navigate supplements and make more informed clinical decisions. Throughout the 16 hours of content, we'll give you the clinical context you'll need to confidently recommend supplements to your patients. The A4M Supplement Certification course is the perfect starting point or clinical update for optimizing your supplement treatment plans to ensure the best possible outcomes for your patients. Go to www.a4m.com slash supplement dash certification dash course dot html and use the promo code podcast20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. Enroll today and elevate your whole person care. Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished A4M faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Hi, welcome to Redefining Medicine. I'm thrilled to have Dr. Sveen with me today, who is a naturopath who is running for the first time our fertility certification. So Dr. Sveen, thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Dr. Schwartz, and thank you for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. Tell me about infertility, because you're actually getting people to have babies after they've been told that there's no hope for them. Absolutely. So really when it comes to fertility, what we've learned is it's kind of the canary in the coal mine for chronic disease and aging. The testes and the ovaries are so sensitive that they end up being the first organs affected by the same mechanisms that lead to other chronic diseases like mitochondrial dysfunction and hormone imbalance and oxidative stress. So it's exciting for A4M to cover this because A4M has always been so innovative in addressing those root causes in like older adults and in chronic disease, metabolic dysfunction, neurological health. And so to pull it back to like women who are of reproductive age and men who are of reproductive age, I think is so exciting. Because one, you can help people get pregnant and everything you do is preventive for all those later chronic diseases in life. I couldn't agree with you more. I actually think the further back you take it, the more likely you are to succeed in preventing disease and making it work. Absolutely. So tell us about infertility and this course that you've started. Well, the certification has been so much fun. We have amazing lecturers, and we really have covered everything from how to evaluate a male and female who are coming in, even how to prepare people that are just starting to think about getting pregnant in the next year. And now that we're in the second day of it, we're diving into more specific patient populations, older women, women with PCOS, women with endometriosis. Um, it's really exciting to get to spend the time to really focus in on this area. And the feedback we've gotten from attendees has been great. I think so really here. feeling like they can get those action-packed tools that they can take back into practice. True, because all we know is IVF. So now right. talk a little bit beyond IVF. What do we do? Yeah, so IVF offers so many amazing tools, and I'm really grateful for it because of the amount of research it's driven into the field of fertility and because it really does offer options for couples that may not be able to get pregnant naturally. It's really a miracle in our medical system, but it has its flaws too. And it really doesn't address the underlying health issues that led to a couple struggling in the first place. And so really what we're teaching is how to augment IVF. And in a lot of cases, help couples get pregnant on their own without needing it, even if they thought they needed it. Um, but it's really exciting to be able to 
talk about how you can make IVF more successful for couples if that's the path they want to go down to because it's so expensive and it's emotionally expensive. So being able to help improve egg quality and improve sperm quality, improve the receptivity of the uterus, those are all things we know how to do with integrative and functional medicine. Um, so give us examples of specifics awesome. of what you're talking about. So some big things like mitochondrial dysfunction. Right. For women who have any kind of hormonal imbalance, you have to get down to the cellular level to fix it. So we know that oxidative stress from stress and poor sleep and chemical exposures all can cause damage to our cells. Well, we know how to help the mitochondria and the cells repair that through glutathione and NAD and um, you know, lots of antioxidants, even simple things like vitamin C. Then you can get into more complex things about why does inflammation and this chronic disease happen? You have like low grade infections. How many people have residual inflammation from COVID or from Epstein-Barr virus or mold exposure? So learning how to address that. And then I'm really excited for tomorrow because we're gonna talk about the microbiome and the microbiome's impact on fertility. And this is an area where there's so much research coming out and it's an area where there's already so much expertise in the room about microbiome that it's going to be great to talk about how to apply that to a new population of patients. Isn't it amazing that you're finally putting together, really, mm -hmm. all these pieces that have been like literally different lanes, and all of a sudden you realize that they coalesce right. and they make such a difference? And I think it's amazing about fertility. Um, tell me about males. And for metals. Emails. So there are a lot of issues with heavy metals. metals. Mm -hmm. um, primarily, like arsenic and cadmium are the two that we worry the most about. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the other metals, like mercury, there's just not a lot of data. And I think part of the challenge is that it's so messy and murky. And it's not just one thing. It's all things. Like when we talk about the environment's impact on fertility, that's huge. And it's multi-generational. So, you know, I have children. Anything that I was exposed to in my pregnancy affected my children's future fertility. And for my daughter, my, it affected my grandchildren's future fertility because her eggs were developing in her ovaries in my womb. So there's this generational impact. So it's something we really need to think about. Endocrine disrupting chemicals, you know, all these forever chemicals, heavy metals. These are things we need to be making sure we're doing the best to like avoid as much as possible. How do you wind up... Um deciding what direction they should take. As they, let's say when they get older, because you know we know about hormones, we know a lot about all the pieces that go, that go together. How do you decide what piece makes sense where? That is such an important question. And the range of options available for how to treat couples is so diverse that you just can't do everything. Um, so that's another thing we cover in the course. I mean, literally you'd have people on Excel sheets of supplements, right. you know, and lifestyle change. Right. So you really have to discern for each patient what's most impactful for them. And we covered that in the course, both in standard routine tests, just like routine blood work, but then also functional testing that can help you discern, for example, with egg quality, whether it's an issue with having testosterone that's too low or oxidative stress that's too high or having a gut issue you know, we really help the attendees identify what the problem is for that patient so that you can be a lot more specific and hopefully a lot more effective in the therapies that That's you choose. Right, mm -hmm. right. How do you interact with uh, OBGYNs who do specialize in infertility? How do they refer to you and what do you do to enhance their results? Well, as you can probably imagine, just like integrative medicine in any field with conventional in my experience, there was natural resistance there. You know, they were shocking. kind of shocking, right? <laughs> Initially, really hesitant to engage. Um, and in my own practice, when I was first starting, there were a couple areas that I thought to myself, how could I help them? How could I help them be more effective with IVF? And a couple areas I identified. One was patients that they were turning away because they weren't good candidates for IVF. And that's primarily women with a high BMI which is, kids be, you know, quote unquote, easy to address. Like as an ND, it's a lot of work, but you know how to help people lose weight healthfully. Um, and the other one was when their ovarian reserve was low, you know, with aging. So I would take those patients and I talked to the reproductive endocrinologist and said, kind of send me the people that you think aren't a good fit for you. I'm going to work with them and then I'm going to be able to send them back. 
to be patients. And so they did that with a couple of patients and found that to be really successful. And so then they started sending more patients my way. And then they started finally sending the patients who showed up on their doorstep, but were a little hesitant to go through IVF. And I think they were grateful to actually have another option to say, if you really want more of a natural route, come over here. But then over time, when I was working with more of their patients, they would see kind of before and after work. Semen analysis is a great example. Men would get a workup and have a semen analysis done. And then they'd be working with me and a couple months later, they'd go in for the IVF round and they're making three to four times the number of healthy sperm that they were making before. And that also caused those docs to pick up the phone and be like, can we come by? You want to have lunch? Um, Really bridging that gap. And so now there's so much more research out there. And actually most research published is in the IVF environment. That's one of the benefits of having it out there. There's money in it. There's money in getting good outcomes. So it would be nice if there was like the reward of just helping people get pregnant and have children. I know. But we do get the opportunity to see like what we can use to improve egg quality or embryo quality or for people who have really healthy embryos but aren't like they're not getting pregnant on transfer, what we can do to support transfer. And one of those things, for example, is like increasing nitric oxide. Now, increasing nitric oxide, it's not the first time that's been taught at A4M. That's relevant to so many different conditions. Right. But when you look at it in the fertility realm, there's so much benefit to it. So again, it's just, it's exciting to see A4M take this on because really infertility is an aging process. It's a sign of dysfunction that really predates by decades some of the other chronic diseases that A4M is so well known for kind of having the key to treat. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, and thank you for bringing this day for Thanks for having me.